interestingly enough, both sides have elected not to do so this time. So it's going to be a little than you normally would expect. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. It, it's, 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 it's more on the towards the scaling into his later stage of the game, right? I feel like overall in general, Indonesia, Team Indonesia has a stronger late game potential because of the 1-1, one, one, but at the same time, the win condition for Team Malaysia is to accelerate the carries farm a little bit more to actually try and punish the Baxia later on, which we eventually requires at least two to three items, like you said as well, potential golden staff coming in to actually scale towards the fight. Whereas from the side of Team Indonesia, all they gotta do is play as safe as possible, stall it out, eventually the 1-1 one, one will just completely carry the game. Yeah, I think it's going to be quite difficult for Team Malaysia to fight into Team Indonesia once that late game comes around. Because 1-1 one, one is going to heavily outscale mm -hmm. the carry played by Momo. And even if Momo is able to get a solid amount of items, he is always vulnerable to being one-shot by Sans on this Veil, that Windstorm dealing out a massive amount of damage. So Momo's positioning in this game has to be perfect. Yeah, and currently Team Indonesia possessing members from three of the strongest Indonesian teams such as RRQ Hoshi, Onyx Esports, as well as Evil Legends. The Indonesian All-Stars are right here. It's no surprises they're looking to go in for the All-In GG gold medal push, but it is going to be very difficult. They are one of the top contenders, but before they do so, they need to overcome the odds. And based on the odds right now that I'm seeing, based on the drafts, I'm really, really liking the 1-1 pickup, and I'm really, really liking that. They have this tanky composition that can make so much space and buy enough time. CW is known for his very, very, uh, I would say, calculated farm or, or, or choices when it comes to uh, getting farms and getting denied as well. So as long as CW doesn't get super, I would say, punished too hard from, from Team Malaysia, he is going to be able to scale his way through. And if you think about it, Team Malaysia's composition doesn't exactly have a very, very strong way to deal with the 1-1, except for the Kufra. Yeah, so it's going to be quite difficult for them. They have to make something happen in the early to mid game. They can't afford to just play passively and allow the late game scaling to come into effect for Team Indonesia. I personally, though, don't think that's going to be much of a concern because this is Team Malaysia we are talking about. They are going to make something happen. I don't yep. think they can sit there and let nothing happen because that's just not in their blood. Yeah, I feel like Team Chico, uh, Team Malaysia, they are going to be relying on an advantage where Chiku will have a little bit upper hand when it comes to punishing early objectives. The first two turtles is going to be the way to go, right? You have that little counter prior early on as well. Second of Retribution, you can dictate the tempo to time and steal the turtle away. So, Team Indonesia is going to be bad. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be second semi finals. We will be resuming the match and this is going to be the match that you guys got to watch. What is interesting here is that Team Indonesia has elected to go with the Vin Sands combo instead of the Keyboy Luminaire combo. I'm wondering which of these lineups is actually the main lineup for Team Indonesia. But considering all these players are all-stars, I don't really think they need a main lineup. They can swap whoever they need around depending on the situation. Agreed. Momo, however, gonna be uh, farming a, a little bit greedy on this gold crab seems like he is gonna be able to get it as contrast to CW that's not gonna be able to contest it as well it seems like CW actually going for uh, well the exploit weakness boxman emblem instead of the I would say the mobility electro flash in that regard yeah, but Weakness Finder is definitely a much more common pick for 1-1 mm -hmm. regardless. So this is understandable coming out of CW. Right now, I'm interested in what Team Malaysia is going to try to do. As we mentioned, they need to start things off with momentum. And it does look like a fight is happening down here. But both sides are pretty tanky to start off the game. So no casualties just yet. Yep, Chiku taking a little bit of uh, HP off in that remark as well. He is going to be a bomber. He's going to have a lot of very, very quick objectives. But now... The question remains, Team Indonesia, how can Sans benefit on the kill? Because who does who do they pick off? From the side of Malaysia, catching off four mates is nearly close to impossible because of the thick HP bar, unless he makes a mistake. Chico, however, is going to be an easier target to go for, but look at this, they are going to be zoning off Team Malaysia for this turtle pick, and four mates going to be coming in. And it seems like Team Malaysia, they will concede the first turtle just because they lost the, the, the map control rather early on. I think that's a smart choice from Team Malaysia. Better to not force it here. Otherwise, they are just giving away advantage to Team Indonesia. They're already a little bit behind in terms of map control. Better not to give out more. Zorn here gonna be waiting in the bush. He does see the rotation. 
So he's able to warn Momo to back it up. Yeah, I don't think Team Indonesia knows he's still sitting there as well. Team Malaysia doesn't exactly have a, a, a good time to actually start off this fight rather early. They are going to be playing a little bit safe before the next couple of fights. I believe Moon needs a couple more items as well. Cecilia, not exactly that strong rather early on, unless the clock does they start to pop off. And so that's going to be the, the way to go for now. But I feel like Indonesia, despite, after taking the first turtle, they're in a much more comfortable position to force fights rather compared to Team Malaysia is looking to capitalize on mistakes just because of the economy lead coming from Indonesia. Indonesia, once they hit level 4, are definitely much more capable of fighting as compared to Malaysia simply because Albert on this Vaxia will be quite sturdy and will buy enough time for Vince and Sans to make havoc onto Malaysia's backline. Meanwhile, only Tiku can really take a good fight at level 4, so mm -hmm. it's better for them to hold on a little bit for Moon and Momo but they're looking for CW. Yep, seems like that is going to be the case as well. CW cannot escape this. Do they have the damage finish bomb? Yes, they will. That was last help, but oh. it seems like he won't be able to prop the crossbow attack, and he is going to survive. Zorn, that was last help. Needs to make a run for it. Meanwhile, the rest of Team Indonesia is going to come in, and they won't get first blood on Momo despite the nice attempt coming from Team Malaysia to get a kill. Oh my goodness, you hate to see it, but that is going to be a big, fat win for Team Indonesia. That's just really unfortunate for Team Malaysia there. They almost got CW, but ended up losing Momo themselves. And because they know Tiku is at bottom side, Albert able to invade and steal away Malaysia's orange buff. Oh, that's very, very nicely done coming from Team Indonesia as well. And wow, the CW was able to survive that because of the inspired plays. He opted not to get staggered by the bounce ball. He was just standing still and he was just challenging his way through. Somehow manages to get the proc and because of that, Zorn is going to be able uh, to, to be shut down. But as of yet, it looks like the aggressive play coming from Vin is going to force a fight. Oh! Looks like a big high offender. Catalyst three members coming from Team Malaysia and they are going to get chipped away and just like that, Sans gets another kill and Zorn gets picked off and Indonesia immediately gets a huge, huge lead in terms of economy and immediately stone smalls for the second turtle. This is exactly the kind of start that Team Indonesia is looking for here. Siku able to get his purple buff away Away from the invade, but you can already see that Team Indonesia is completely expanding their map influence into Malaysia's own jungle. And while yes, Momo and Moon will scale up quite well into the late game, we have to know that CW and Sans will do exactly the same. They can't let this continue happening. Yep, and that's pretty much it for uh, the fight for now. But as of yet, Team Malaysia, they are going to be in a very, very big deficit. Very even five minutes in the game, Team Indonesia already getting a very, very quick tier one down bottom. Meanwhile, this is going to be a stalemate coming from both these teams as a... Uh, oh, looks like there is going to be a pause here as uh, everyone is going to be stand still, as, standing still as of yet, I guess. So far, if we look at the net worth difference, Indonesia is already 3k in the lead, only 5 minutes into the game. This is a very big gap at this stage and it's going to be quite difficult for Team Malaysia to come back from this considering that Indonesia already has pretty notable control over the map making it that much more difficult for the late game heroes on Team Malaysia to find space to farm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree, considering that uh, the one opportunity that Malaysia tried to make an attempt on towards uh, C, 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 phone, sorry, C, CW was really, really good, but they just need not one more auto attack to actually get the kill. If they got on kill, it would have been an okay start for Team Malaysia, but ever since CW was able to get away with it and also come up on top against Momo, Toda, uh, sorry, Team Malaysia, they have to play this very, very safely throughout the next uh, uh, few fights. And it's just very, very difficult to do so just because of how oppressive the compositions that Team Indonesia have. Like, you have this mobility uh, box set that just goes in for the end base. And we talked about how strong the Franco has kind of stood in the matter. I'm offended, pulls in, immediately sets up for a big fight from Team Indonesia. Just kind of puts them in a spot where they can force the fight however they want. Whereas from Team Malaysia, they are now in a situation where they are forced to react instead. Yeah, right now Team Malaysia is in no position to be able to take fights at all. And Team Indonesia are doing a very good job of taking advantage of that window of opportunity. As long as they can continue controlling the map in this situation and expanding their influence and farm, it's going to be a situation where there's not really much opportunity for Team Malaysia to come back simply because in the late game, 1-1 one, one is too strong. Yeah, I definitely agree. But it all comes down to whether or not Momo is able to scale, right? If Momo somehow finds a way to get his goal that he just lost a little bit and somehow find a little bit more on the control, he is going to be able to try and chip and punish on towards the tanks coming in from 
from uh, Team Indonesia. Uh, Boxer is an amazing easy target for carry, but I feel like the Ruby is going to be a little bit difficult just because of how uh, disruptive the Ruby can be in team fights. And honestly, I feel like based on how Indonesia was getting a uh, early, early tier one down bottom, there is a little bit more map control. It's very risky for Momo to get some farms down bottom, but if he plays his card safe, the lanes are continuously going to be shoved in the way where he is going to have a lot of safety and requires a lot of commitment from Indonesia to actually dive in unless the mid tower is going to be taken out. But I do still think they have the resources to be able to dive onto Momo if he's just even slightly out of position. And since Team Malaysia now, they're going to be depending very heavily on Moon and Momo to get that late game scaling. They have to expend a fair amount of resources themselves just to protect these two heroes. And the more that they group up, the more that Team Indonesia can farm the rest of the map. Yeah, I definitely agree where you're coming from as well when it comes to... I was expecting Luminaire to be playing in this game, but Vin playing on the role as well has had a very, very good start on this build. Means with his early kills, it is going to get those early power spikes on level 7, level 8 very, very quickly for the next upcoming fight. So as of yet, they are already in this vicinity. And I believe Sans did have... I would say a first item clock of destiny instead of a usual upgraded boost uh shoes and also a mystery shop this is going to put him in a situation where he's going to hit very very hard rather early whereas team malaysia needs they need to start to build a lot of magic defense very very soon you can see here that both sans and win are waiting in the bush they know that zorn is waiting their forces out the flicker from the kufra that is an important tool for this hero and zorn will not have access to it for the next two minutes well that is actually a uh, big bait as well coming from uh, from him considering that that is major ultimates coming from team indonesia but somehow team indonesia they're not actually going for the first commitment as well Sans doesn't have the ultimate and looks like this is going to be an option for team malaysia to make a fight she could try to go in for a challenge win won't pay for the price however the crossbow attack coming from cw will join in rather early and this is what I'm talking about as well he will always try and take advantage of the situation and to join the fight as early as possible and because of this he was able to get a very very early lead just like that once again DW has already proven in many previous games that his mechanics are all oh, no. that is not good for Maze and Zorn instantly taken out the combo from Indonesia proving to be way too strong and Team Malaysia are gonna drop another two members oh my goodness that was a big big fat catch coming from Sans just like that and over the items itself as well looks like they are gonna be giving the third total in the back meanwhile on the top side as well Momo is gonna get completely bullied out from R7 he does have the power like to fight his way through. Chico is going to be joining the fight, but look at this. R7, he doesn't really care. He wants to actually finish off Momo. Unfortunately to say, Momo is in a very threatening position. Meanwhile, the rest of Team Indonesia is going to be invading onto his Malaysia's buff territory. You can see that because of this aggression from Indonesia, the way that they've been able to invade the jungle, Albert is already two levels ahead of Chiku. That's why the Balman isn't doing much. They flicker backwards, catch out Moon, setting up the kill for Sans yet again. This Ruby Veil combo is a problem for Team Malaysia. That's really, really scary considering that CY just walked past four maze, completely ignoring the turret and he minutes shifts his focus onto his moon. I, and I believe that Moon wasn't expecting that at all. And because of this priority decision coming from Indonesia, they were able to get a very, very easy pickings. Moon now, however, gets a lucky trunken, but he's not gonna able to do anything in this next couple of fights, considering how far ahead Team Indonesia is eight minutes into the game. But it seems like we are going towards a uh, pause for now. I believe that we've heard that there is going to be yet another technical pause. Seems like there are some issues happening over there. So we do apologize to all of you watching at home. We as well understand that this does kind of mess with the momentum of the game a little bit. But considering that what is at stake right now for all of these teams, it is very important to make sure that any technical issues are resolved so that all of these players can play at maximum potential. Oh, this is so, 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 so very difficult to actually pick a fight as well, considering that this is all actually happening across the map. But overall, Team Malaysia, they really, really are struggling to find pickoffs just because of how oppressive the 1-1 one -one can be. C7 right now is in a situation where they're so far ahead. He can do whatever they want and there's nothing Team Malaysia can do as of yet unless Zorn gets a, like a very, very sick uh, catch, which is nearly close to impossible because of the constant uh, disruption of the Ruby itself.
This is why teams ban out the Wan Wan. This is why the hero has been the most consistently banned out hero since the beginning of the C games. The crossbow of Tang is too effective of a fighting tool. And if you give it to a player as mechanically skilled as CW here, it's just so free for Team Indonesia. It puts so much of a disadvantage in the pockets of Team Malaysia that they have to deal with. And yes, the Kufra is a good counter to the 1-1, one, one, but we've already seen in the early game that Team Indonesia is simply out-rotating them, and now that effectiveness has completely fallen off. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like this is a, uh, in a situation where Team Malaysia, they have to get the Miracle Run, right? We were expecting that Chiku on the bomb is going to get like, like early, early fights. And I hope that they do have a strategy to make a comeback because as of now, we are going to be jumping straight into the game where Team Indonesia is going to be looking to try and chip away at everything. But based on the formations right now, Team Malaysia, they are going to be looking to help Momo get his farm. And that's going to be the early go-to staff coming from Momo. It's pretty early, yes, but now you uh -huh. see four mains. He's completely out of position. CW already has the crossbow of Tang, gonna be able to use it. Four mains down to his final HP bar, 1v4. Nothing he can do, but I think this is fine, honestly. Four mains, he bought time. Malaysia got a tower in the top lane. Yeah, that's gonna be a little bit of space creation for him. He's gonna be voluntarily serving a lie, but here comes the pickoff coming in. Nope, Sun's not gonna be able to connect that, so Team Malaysia will narrowly survive for now. Sun Tower will be forced to recall back to actually get his health back up, but the Lord is going to be available for grab. Team Malaysia going to be completely ignoring it. Likewise, coming from Indonesia, but R7 will trade the Tier 1 up top. This is going to be pretty rough for Malaysia right now, but very easy sailings for Team Indonesia. They are currently 6,000 net worth ahead, 9.5 minutes into the game. I do think that a lot of that is going to be on CW as well, which is a situation you never want to be in against a 1-1. Oh, That's now R7 jumping on top of Momo. He's probably going to get caught out here. Lethal oh, counter, way. not enough to finish him off. R7 going to be able to walk away. No way. R7 with the quick sidestep just like that. Not going to be able to do anything about the situation. Oh, you hate to see it, but Team Malaysia are not going to be able to do anything about that as well. He tried to sidestep his way through, but he down, he went down with the last tick of health. It's just very, very unfortunate. And they needed that sort of kills to actually get some sort of recovery comeback in terms of economy. As of right now in this game, it does feel like that Team Malaysia is getting quite notably outclassed by the all-star mm -hmm. Indonesian team. Obviously, we've seen teams be able to pull off comebacks at this stage, but it's going to take quite the miracle run from Team Malaysia, as right now, all Team Indonesia needs to do is not make mistakes. Exactly. The Lord is going to be grabbed from inside Team Indonesia. It is going to be forced down middle. Chico, however, is going to be slowing down Lord a little bit here to try and sync up the lanes, but the rest of the Team Indonesia is going to be knocking into the inhibitors very, very soon. Team Indonesia seems like uh, they are gonna try and close up the game very, very quickly because Team Malaysia, they just lost all the outer stars and that uh, there doesn't seem to be a play anytime soon. Team Malaysia right now are 9,000 oh gold behind Indonesia, 11 minutes into the game. This is the kind of gold discrepancy that you do not expect to be able to come back from. They need a miracle run. They need Indonesia to make some sort of massive mistake. And I'm pretty sure that from what we've seen of Team Indonesia, that is not going to happen. Dude, CW is 9.3k net worth as well. He's got the Athena show, he's got the Silent Phantom, and I don't think Team Malaysia can do anything to actually kill him, considering how mobile CW is, and he's already level 13. Moon is pretty much the main damage to actually shock his way through, but it's nearly impossible to actually finish him off now as of this stage. You can see why Team Malaysia is just so afraid to force the fight just because of how quickly CW is. Look at this. Barely even 12 minutes the game, CW is already level 14, almost level 15. Team Indonesia now has complete control over the map. They can farm both jungles with impunity. Team Malaysia completely forced to just stay in their base. There is nothing they can do. And Team Indonesia, all they got to do is wait for the Lord to come back up. And then they can use it to push in. I don't even think Team Malaysia are close enough in terms of farms to actually defend against it. Yep. And as of yet, seems like that is going to be the play to go. But, ah. Uh, I don't know, how long is this going to be dragged out? Because Team Indonesia, you can see smiles on Albert's face of wall as he is going to be looking to go in for a couple of uh, crazy plays potentially. But this boxer is 1-0-4, level 15. 
they're just so far ahead in terms of economy and there's just nothing Team Malaysia can do right now. And they're just sitting in the base, just waiting for the right moment. Playing it's a little bit safe, but I believe this next Lord, the moment the play comes in, Team Malaysia is going to be able to practice as a defense for Team Malaysia. And I don't think they can actually do too much about it. Yeah, I don't really think so. This is quite difficult to watch, to be honest. It is a very slow asphyxiation by Team Indonesia. The Luminous Lord has now spawned in the land of Dawn. Obviously, Team Malaysia not going to be able to do anything to contest this. And that means that we're going to be seeing this push down a lane very, very soon for what may be Malaysia's final defense. Yep, exactly. And that is going to be, uh, you know, a little bit of pressure coming in as well. Four mates is a little bit on the level. Zorn looks like he's going to try and make a play against R7. That is going to be the sprint coming from him as he zips out of the situation. He's going to be A-OK. -okay. And it seems like sprint on Esmeralda puts him in a situation where he's very, very difficult to kill. So no purify. Sprint is to go. Right now, we see Immortality being purchased by Vin as well, so he's gonna be able to just execute even more aggressive plays. Luminous Lord pushing down but mid lane. CW dropping real low as well. Sam's gonna be wasting his abilities, but Crossbow of Tang has been executed, taking out Moon. Four maids now in the back line along with Zorn to get CW. Finally, a shutdown on the 1-1. One -one. Oh, wow. Luminous Lord taking out the mid inhibitor as R7 jumps in with the falling star moon, finding Chiku. Now it is a 3v4 situation. Four maids so very tense. Tanky can buy a lot of time. The Luminous Lord is now down. Four maids down to his final HP bar. They are clearing up the minion wave, but I'm offended. Cat is out. Four maids. He's gonna drop over to the side of Team Indonesia. Albert finds him. Zorn, Momo, the only one surviving. Momo trying to do his best, but he is the next target. He is going to get targeted. Flicker going to allow him to get out of that, but the final inhibitor will drop for the side of Team Malaysia. Well, it seems like Team Indonesia, they're playing a little bit safe. They managed to get all the inhibitors, but they need to go for the reset. Not exactly sure why, but they do have the capabilities to close out the game. But playing it safe is going to be the way to go just because of how if they die a single time, it's going to give a huge, huge swing in terms of economy into a team Malaysia. So not taking those kind of risks is going to be the discipline place, even though technically they can. However, Divine Clay purchase up on Moon means that he is going to start to clap very, very hard. But team Malaysia... They are going to wait this out and they are going to stop Team Malaysia because of this place. Not giving any sort of kills is the right place. If they, any one of them of, of, from side Team Indonesia dies, it is going to give a little bit of a glimmer of hope for Team Malaysia to come back into this, this game. Except it's not going to make too much of a difference here considering that the net worth difference now is 13,000 in favor of Team Indonesia. Yes, Team Malaysia were able to successfully defend their base in the previous push, but they lost all of their structures. And now with the next, next Lord coming up in 35 seconds, I am thinking that this game is not going to be lasting for too much longer. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how this is happening as well, but we are late, heading those late game territories as well as Team Malaysia needs to hit their final level 15 at 20 seconds left on the clock. Team Indonesia, they have the right play. Do they force the fight against Team Malaysia or do they defend against the Lord? It's all about stalemates for now as Team Malaysia can only sit and wait for the right moment to strike. Yep. Right now, Malaysia, they've been stuck in their base for a very long time. They're just trying to hold the minion waves there for as long as possible for reasons that I personally am not very certain about. I guess they're just pooling up their resources here so that they can farm it all at once. Yeah, I, I like this decision as well where they actually freeze the lane and sync it up so that everyone has an even share of farm so that they can actually scale together. It's a very, very, I would say teamwork based concept to play this style, but hopefully it's going to be enough because as of yet, Momo is finally level 15. Somehow, they managed to actually scale it into this game and Momo is also going to be full slaughter right now. So one wrong move from Team Malaysia means that Team Malaysia is going to be able to make a comeback because they've got the damage, they've got what they're capable of as well. As Team Malaysia, they have the power, potion advantage, but I feel like it is going to be a pretty, pretty close one because as of now, Momo is going to be able to hit very, very hard because of this place. The disciplineness of Team Malaysia to survive it all is going to be the way to go. But hopefully it is going to be enough. It's not too late yet.
The Luminous Lord now gonna be pushing in mid lane. This is the final defense here for Maze already tanking it up. They're ready. They flicker backward. I'm offended. Finds Momo. Mega kill going over the sands. Luminous Lord on top of the crystal. Jiku dropping real low as well. He's gonna be the next one taken out. Immortality pop for Maze on his last HP bar. Sands doing a lot of damage. And Indonesia just break right through the front door, taking game one against Team Malaysia. Oh, that was a very, very clean game coming from Team Indonesia winning on all